The weather has gone from bad to worse. Massive waves lap over the boat, slamming into the men on the bridge. It's no better inside the hole either. Everyone and everything is being tossed around like a bunch of potatoes. The high speed winds are icy cold as well, piercing your face when you're on the bridge. However, the boat moves on. We are diving frequently in an effort to detect any American warships before they are on top of us. This has the added effect of giving the bridge crew a little break from the mayhem above. I am hoping the storm lets up soon. Hunting is difficult in such conditions when visibility is so poor. I suppose time will tell. Hello everybody, Wolfpack345 here and welcome back to more Silent Hunter 3 as we continue our second patrol. As you can see, it is just pea soup out here. Uh, it's raining pretty hard, it's kind of, there we go, you can kind of see it at that angle. As you can see, yeah, it's really pouring down and these waves are really high just lapping over the decks here. So hunting in these conditions is going to be rather difficult due to the fact that visibility is, oh, I would say about 300 meters, probably a little more. So that definitely creates a uh, limited <laughs> bubble where we can actually engage targets. Also, it makes me really on edge since our last little, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, running into with those American destroyers. Those American destroyers are merging out of the fog. Uh, it's kind of scary. <laughs> so we are definitely going to submerge frequently uh, during this storm to avoid any destroyers homing in onto us using a radar, which I'm sure a lot of American destroyers do have. So that is just something we need to be worried about and uh, stay on top of. So I need to be sure I dive and I do not want a repeat of last episode. Overall, nothing's has changed. I'm really picking up right where the last episode left off. We, we just sunk this ship here. Let's go ahead and clean the map a little bit. And we're just heading south. I'm waiting for a great moment to strike New York Harbor. Well, not the harbor itself. That's uh, not suicidal, but head towards the mouth and see what we can do. Other than that, that's that's about it. Nothing else uh, too exciting to really say. Um, I guess an update on the the 4K videos. I'm going to try something different this episode and see if uh, it's better at nighttime. Uh, if I can avoid doing 4K, I'm going to because I tried the 4K video, and by God, does that take a long time to process and everything. Like, an absurd amount of time. For a 30 minute video, it's pretty rough. So, uh, I'd have to redo my schedule if I were to do that, and it would be quite tedious. Uh, I think part of the problem is I am upscaling to 4K, so that requires a little bit more work for my computer. If I was just recording the native resolution and 4K, I think it wouldn't be as big of an issue, but uh, upscaling it seems to take ages. So we'll see. Maybe I'll just get a 4K monitor. <laughs> <laughs> I've been kind of thinking of getting one anyway, uh, but I don't know. That, that's all. That's all speculation. And in the future, hopefully, these little fixes I have whipped up should uh, help the quality. I did some experiments; they look better, uh, a little better. I, I think it's just something we're going to have to suffer through together, sadly. But uh, that's that's about it. The crew is hunky dory. Everyone except uh, poor Frost back here. He's just by himself. Poor fellow. But morale's good, endurance is okay for the most part. My watchman is feeling well rested. We're going to go ahead and throw him up there. And our guys with the diesel qualifications are well rested too. So we'll go ahead and throw them in the engineering room. And engineering room, diesel engines. What is this, Star Trek? <laughs> and we'll go ahead and rotate these guys out. And we, the U-105 is good to go. The torpedo situation, we can't reload externals in these uh, terrible seas, so those are just going to have to sit there and look pretty for the time being. Uh, everything else is as we left it in the last uh, episode. So, it's currently March 3rd, 1942. We're coming up on a month at sea. We departed Lorient at, on February 5th. So that's exciting, coming up on a month. It's crazy to think we've only been out a month. And there's an ambulance screaming by. All right. Anyway, uh, it's crazy to believe we've only been out a month and we've destroyed all of these vessels. Um, we've definitely made quick work over here. But, uh, okay, I guess that's it. I'm going to quit rambling now and I'll get back to you guys. Hopefully when this weather clears up because this, this is bad. 
<laughs> I'll probably do I'll probably go to periscope depth every 30 minutes or so maybe even maybe I'll just ride out the whole storm during the day at periscope depth but if anything's worse than the destroyer coming at me during the day it's them coming at me during the night because visibility is going to be even worse and they're going to be able to pretty much just ram me <laughs> um, in the middle of the night I feel like so that is something to be worried about anyway we'll see what happens hopefully hopefully nothing happens that's that would be fantastic if the game would give me a break but uh, we'll see well and here we are the weather oh wow was that lightning way out there I guess the the rain has stopped for the time being it seems like there's still lightning off in the distance but overall I think we're in the clear my men have changed into their I guess normal watch uniforms instead of their rubbers so I think we are good let's go ahead and do a weather report here it actually lightened up a lot faster than I expected so clouds overcast yeah I can see that fog is light wind is only nine meters per second as opposed it was at 11 uh, earlier when I was previously recording and uh, the wind direction is pretty much south all right well overall that is good news so I think we are going to go ahead and that this is our this is our moment to strike folks I think uh, wrong tool let's go ahead and head over to the coast and see what we can do uh, I actually want to kind of hug this coast here to get any merchant traffic that's hugging this coast because I feel like that's that's what I would do as a merchant ship I would come out and kind of you know sail around next to the coast and a lot of traffic is going to be going into New York Harbor um, yep so that's the current plan we'll see how that goes the problem is obviously there is very little deep water over in this area probably yeah probably close to 17 meters so yeah Diving to periscope depth is not going to really happen, and hopefully there's no mines. So, God, we have so much to look forward to. Can't wait. Aircraft spotted. Crash dive. Boy, I was, you know, I was thinking about that. There has been very few aircraft this patrol, and then, <laughs> oh, the game knows me. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and emergency dive here. Let's see, what is the depth underneath our keel, please? 68 meters, perfect. Let's go down to 60. And let's look for that pesky airplane. I don't see it. I guess this is okay weather for flying. And looks like he's kinda off at an angle. I don't think he's really coming for me. And yeah, there we go, it's a little float plane can't really see too well because uh, we're going flank and that's just the way that the game handles these things so all right well, we'll go ahead and emergency dive here it's probably good to make a hard turn as well let's go ahead and start turning to starboard as we come down and hopefully he doesn't have depth charges I'm listening but I think we're good. Thankfully, my eagle-eyed watch crew were able to see that. I couldn't even see that. And it seemed like that aircraft's camouflage was pretty much the same color as the the clouds there. So, good work, man. Good work. You deserve a medal. And we're going to go ahead and bring put him in bed. We'll stay submerged for a little bit to get him some rest. Having only one officer with this watchman qualification is actually a huge pain in the butt. Uh, I really regret that now. I should have given someone else one, but Alright, let's go ahead and let's bring her down to about uh, two knots Alright, and we'll hang out here at I guess we decided 59 meters is good enough 60 is a little too difficult. Alright, let's go ahead and check the hydrophones just to see what we can hear. Whoa All right hallucinating all right let's see so far I'm not I haven't heard anything just yet yep nothing really 
Okay, so we'll go ahead and stay submerged for just a little bit, probably, oh, an hour. And then we'll surface the boat and continue racing towards New York Harbor. I'll probably go standard. Fuel is just fine. We've been hanging out at around 60% for a while. We haven't been burning too much fuel, which I'm not really complaining about, but... All right, so I will keep you guys updated. Well, look what we have there. I went ahead and submerged, and we were just, you know, hanging out. And I raised my scope to do a little check like I usually do before we surface the boat. And we have a little PT boat <laughs> hanging out. Well, hello there. And it looks like it's not going very fast at all. Well, let's go ahead and finish our scan here. I found a little deep water pocket in all of this... Uh, fairly shallow water the depth of the water it's about 40 meters and i'm honestly shocked is he even running his engines let's see he's at zero two seven degrees my hydrophone operator didn't hear him at all and didn't notify me which is actually very frustrating now i understand that okay now he hears him wow thanks for the update idiot <laughs> Anyway, he didn't tell me before until I surfaced my boat, and he's right there. He's very close. Let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm not obviously not gonna not gonna do anything against the ship. There he is, or boat. Yeah, he's just very slowly cruising along. Yeah, you should definitely be able to hear that. I understand it's uh the weather conditions are gonna make it a little more difficult to hear because of all the noise, all the background noise. But uh, come on, buddy. Ah, oh, what a work of art. Alright, well, we'll go ahead and stay submerged, I guess, while this little guy, uh, piddles around. We do have to be very cautious of him. He won't launch his torpedoes at us. Unfortunately, the game doesn't model that. There are mods, though. <laughs> there are mods, especially for Sun Hunter 4. I think they... They will. Uh, follow the Rising Sun, that mod for Silent Hunter 4, they, uh, they've added torpedoes, which is definitely <laughs> exciting uh, to have torpedoes launched at you from aircraft and uh, PT boats. Must be terrifying. And even destroyers. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and do a quick sweep, and we'll surface the boat and continue onward. I'll get back to you guys soon. Okay, we've detected a ship heading out of New York Harbor here. It looks like it's heading southeast fast. Let's go ahead and just plot that down and head towards it. Uh, the depth here, 12 meters, yikes. It looks like there's some deep water right here. So if the ship is still here, let's go ahead and head towards this pocket. All ahead full. Hopefully the ship maintains this course out of the harbor, because that would be ideal if we could engage it in this deep water, where we could go to periscope depth. That would work very nicely. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and 315, since it is heading uh, kind of fast. I do want to be sure we have an opportunity to engage it. Whatever she may be. Start the timer. Alright, and let's take a look at it. Oh, it looks like the sea state has really mellowed out as well, which is uh, concerning for us. Just a little bit. The weather's getting a little too yeah, nice now. <laughs> Especially where we are. All right, 215, 10 kilometers out. Well, we are turning. There it is. Ooh, that is an extremely large ship. I don't know if y'all can make that out over the horizon, but that looks like a, an ocean liner. If that's what that is, we... Hmm. We could push periscope depth here. So, what do they say? 12 meters? Let's do another one. Another check. 12 meters. Now, we could probably completely conceal our conning tower at 10 and a half meters. It would be close, and we have to pray to God that <laughs> there's not a mine under us. <laughs> uh, I doubt there would be if a ship's heading this way, though. The Americans should know where their own minefields are. Alright, it looks like water's getting a tad deeper. No, yeah, whatever, fall of course. 11 meters, so never mind, I, I lied. I think going to periscope depth, we might have to. We might, we'll have to try, I think. 
because this ship is closing extremely quickly. Man, this thing has to be going like almost 18 knots. All right, we hit three minutes. I'm going for 15 seconds. I might go ahead and submerge. Just really, really push it. <laughs> uh, just dig our keel into uh, the mud, I guess. We'll see. Mark. Now I'm wishing it was night. Uh, the grass is always greener. Uh, 15 knots, not too bad. Uh, there is absolutely, there is diddly squat for deep water here. So this ship is, we're maintaining speed with it. All ahead flank. I'm really afraid this ship is going to spot us here. It's still around 10 kilometers out. So we do have quite a bit of distance between us. And we have to really hope this thing doesn't change course depth here. 12 meters. This is probably going to be more of the same unless until we reach this little nugget. Let's see. Check now. We just need to find a good spot. 14 meters. Perfect. All right. Bring me down to periscope depth, please. Oh, that's not really what I wanted. And let's go ahead and align our boat. Like so. And let's get a better looking course. Damn it, it's zigzagging. Or it's just changing course. Up scope, all head slow. I hope it's just changing course. We can adapt to that, but if it's zigzagging, that's gonna be a pain in the butt. Especially because, well, A, my speed reading will be totally wrong. It could be very well changing course and following the coast. Let's see, we're currently at 12 meters. Where are you, my big delicious friend? There you are. It looks like it just changed course. I'm tempted to surface again. Yeah, let's surface, all head flank. Let's change course. Let's try to move around it and get into a better position here. Alright, hitting the surface. It could just. Yeah, it definitely did just change course. Okay, good. Wow, it's really hugging the coast here. Uh, Depth under keel here. Looks like it's just heading due south now. South, it's probably going 15 knots, but we're going to go ahead and respeed this guy. And we do not want to be recharging our batteries at this time. And lower that goddamn scope, please. God, the water is pretty flat. This is frustrating now. <laughs> uh, but actually, it's not bad. If Probably if it were any rougher, so it's 9.5 kilometers out. That's pretty close. I'm afraid it's going to see us. If the waves were any worse, it would probably probably be hard for us to get to a, a speed faster than the ship. If I'm being 100% honest. So I think this is actually working out in our favor. Well, we'll try to maneuver in front of it. Hopefully we get a chance to. And I'll keep you guys updated on the situation. So they have most definitely spotted us. Uh, there, There is a good thing to come out of this, though. Oh, boy. <laughs> Believe it or not, there is something good. The ship has slowed down considerably to start zigzagging. So that works out rather well for us. So we're going to go ahead and try to outrun it now. As you can see, its speed is slow. So we're going to try to move ahead a much farther and get into a good spot to intercept it. Now there is a problem with this, of course, that there might be a destroyer in the area coming to save this large ship. Uh, that is something we'll have to deal with when the time comes, but for now I'm going to be irresponsible and continue tracking this ship here. Well folks, unfortunately I think I lost that ship that we were tracking. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you guys what happened. So it started firing at us like around here, right? And I maneuvered all the way to this little deep water pocket thinking it would maintain its, its course uh, along the coast, but 
that was obviously wrong because I, I never heard, I never saw it again because I broke visual contact to avoid, you know, getting shot at and uh, the ship never came uh, across my path because I found this little deep water pocket and I'm like, oh, perfect. This is nice and close. We'll be able to shoot, you know, nice and easily from this area. But apparently the ship broke off and probably was heading to England or something. So that is a... Uh, a shame. This is not going uh, as well as I would have hoped. Let's go ahead and clear this and we'll, we'll maintain. We'll go ahead and head back up here and see what we can find. It's currently March 5th, 1942. So, uh, yeah, disappointing, but honestly, we've had such good luck this patrol. I'm not letting that get me down just yet. So, we still have uh, plenty more to see. Maybe we'll come across another transport ship or ocean liner or something like that. Maybe something big. We'll see. Anyway, we'll keep on piddling around and I'll get back to you guys whenever we detect something. Okay, so we've spotted a ship on the surface that's coming straight for us. Oh my god. Oh, sorry, I was changing course quite a bit and they're just going bonkers now. Let's go ahead and time it out. Let's see. It is pitch black outside, so I'm probably going to go ahead and make this attack on the surface. Give me a 026. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything, Chief. It is so dark. I doubt you folks are going to be able to see much out here, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not seeing anything, so I'll just trust their their judgment. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and slow down. And actually, let's start reversing. We actually need to start reversing a little, a little quicker, please. And let's see if we can get visual. Hopefully, this ship doesn't have guns. Think we can use our guns in these, in this weather. We have 19 rounds, so uh, depending on how large the vessel is, we should be able to put her under. Speed is 13 knots. Let's go ahead and bring the Yuzo up. All right, yeah, let's stop that. Give me, where is she? Zero five eight. There we go. I can see the smoke. I can kind of see the ship, but just barely. Uh, this is unfortunately going to be a radio show for you guys. <laughs> it is a tanker. Okay, I can see it. I can make it out here. Uh, yeah, it's a small tanker. Let's go to the merchant ships. And the click fest begins. It will be small tanker, 4,760 tons. Let's lock that in. Speed we established was 13 knots, 10, 11, 12, 13 set. Angle on bow. Looks like it's at about 40 degrees right now. Range is going to be awfully bloody close. Uh, let's go ahead and just get something here. 4,000 meters. Uh, that's probably pretty far for now, but anyway, we, let's see what we got. We have tube 1 and 3 are G7As. We will be using those today. So tubes, switch the salvo, tubes 1 and 3. There we go. Fast speed, impact pistol, 1.5 degree spread since we are shooting very, very close. And let's get everything uh, tracking for the time being. All stop, all head slow. Alright, the ship's probably going to be about, probably around a kilometer out whenever we begin firing. Let's see, angle on bow. Let's do the degrees. I can use the angle solver here. The attack plot, let's see, what's its course? One, three, zero. One, three, zero. Go ahead and get that up. See, the ship's course is... It's gonna be right here. Oh, come on now. One, three, zero, angle on bow. Really? Really? Okay, never mind, I'm dumb. Angle on bow is 70. We'll go ahead and plug in some. That's actually, hey, I was actually not too far off. All right, set range one kilometer. 
set. Open tubes two and three. Uh, we want torpedo depth depth on these guys. Let's go ahead and set torpedo depth for three meters. Open tubes one and three. All right, looks like both torpedo tube doors are open. We will wait, we have 10 degrees left to go before we fire. Six, five, four, three, two. Closing in on one. All right, tubes one and three, los. There we go, tube one away. And tube three is away. Angle on bow is very close to 90, like 85 degrees, so that's not too shabby. And those bad boys are away. It looks like uh, range I underestimated just a bit, but that actually was uh, not too bad. And yeah, not, not bad at all. And it looks like they're running hot straight normal, and I think those are two hits right there. Let's go ahead and we'll actually, we'll actually watch this one from the bridge. So the ship's right there. There we go. Torpedo impact number one. Torpedo impact number two. There we go. And that should definitely be enough to put her under. Doesn't look like the uh, merchant ship has any guns or anything like that. She's actually fairly easy to see here. Hopefully you guys can make that out. The problem is uh, just ships merging with the horizon. That's the problem I noticed. But this should be a okay. And she's going down. Perfect. We got confirmation of that. And now we are going to get the hell out of Dodge <laughs> for a little bit. Uh, there is a deep water pocket here, so that's what I'll head for. And all ahead, all ahead full, please. So we do need to reload those two torpedoes. To do this, we do need to submerge. So we'll go ahead and we'll probably do that in this deep water pocket and linger around and see what else we can catch. I will keep you guys updated on our progress there. And yeah, I can even see it from here. The ship, we hit pretty high, uh, three meters, and you can see the blast marks on the side of the hull there. Let's go ahead and let's take a look. Let's take a look. We're passing right next to it. No explosions or anything like that. It looks like she's just going to, going to slip beneath the waves here, but you can see the blast marks right there. Those are very accurate, too accurate for stormtroopers. All right, well, she's going down. That is a, a small tanker to add to our tally. Let's take a look. Small tanker, 4,788 tons. Not too bad. So that brings our total to an absurd amount of ships. I'm not going to recount. I don't remember. But uh, <laughs> we'll continue onward. We're going to run away from the scene of the crime. Oh, my God. I almost shit my pants just then. <laughs> I thought we were about to hit the, the Hulk there. Um follow plotted course please <laughs> uh, thankfully it kind of drifted away from this mark all right so let's go ahead and run away uh well, it looks like Uther needs a rest but you know what i'm gonna work you like a dog up there because you're the only guy i got so you're gonna have to stay up there sorry about that chief and uh we'll continue onward i'll get back to you guys probably when we're submerging and uh, our torpedoes are reloaded or of course if something else happens. Okay, well, all of our torpedoes have been successfully reloaded. We have tubes one and two loaded. Back up with G7A torpedoes. I need to load these externals when I get the chance. Uh, it is currently March 6th, and I think I'm going to go ahead and disengage from this area altogether. And next episode, we'll head towards Boston and Portland. I think we'll find much more success here due to just the deeper waters. This is kind of nerve-wracking, uh, to be honest. Uh, I'm not, not a fan, <laughs> frankly. So we're going to head back out to uh, deeper seas, bluer seas, I guess. And uh, hopefully we don't get killed on the way out there. Uh, this was exciting. We had our, a night attack, which is pretty neat. But overall, just tracking ships here is extremely difficult. Uh, yeah, kind of, kind of scary. I feel like it is relatively heavily defended, or it should be. I think we've been lucky in uh, not finding any American destroyers. Let's go ahead and surface the boat, and I'll head standard here. And it looks like there's another ship entering or leaving the mouth there. But yeah, I'm not gonna. We're not going to deal with that. So we're going to go ahead and head for these deeper waters and head towards the Gulf of Maine up here. I think that will be. Uh, a good place to end the patrol. We only have, what, four 
eight, uh, nine torpedoes left. So the patrol is nearing its end. Fuel is still okay, which is surprising due to the fact that I did burn so much fuel chasing that freaking troop transport all the way down here, only to have it change course on me. Which I can't say I'm surprised it did that. I mean, that's a smart thing to do. But uh, I probably just went back home and was like, fuck this, we're, <laughs> we're going to go back to port. <laughs> that's what... I, I can't say I blame them. I can't say I blame them at all. But anyway, that's going to be the current plan for the time being. We will escape these waters under the cover of pretty dark darkness. Uh, you heard it here. Dark darkness. And oh my goodness. I have a bad habit of leaving that scope up. Okay, well, that will be it for this episode. As always, thank you guys for watching. We'll go ahead and go in here where you folks can see a little bit. Uh, thank you all for watching. This is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I will see you guys on the next episode where the U-105 enters the Gulf of Maine.